Welcome everyone. In the past seven hours, a number of mainstream media news outlets have started publishing the story of yet another Kotao scuba instructor who has sadly passed away on Kotao. He was found dead in his rented bungalow on Wednesday the 18th of January and his name was Neil Giblin originally from Birmingham in England and I've been told reliably that he lived on Kotao for over 20 years. I will read through the very brief Sun article with you right now and then I will add a few comments as we go along and at the end just to supplement that very brief article. It reads, Death in Paradise, Mystery as Brit Diver Found Dead on Thailand's Notorious Death Island, and the author is Ryan Parry. It goes on, A British diving instructor has been found dead in mysterious circumstances on a notorious death island. The body of Neil Giblin, 48, was discovered in a rented bungalow on Koh Tao, Thailand, on Wednesday. Two female clients raised the alarm when he did not turn up. Police say he died from natural causes. In fact, at the time, the police and medics were instantly saying he had died of a heart attack, and that was long before anyone had a chance to perform any post-mortem. The article continues, they said there was no sign of a struggle, but they have gained a reputation for dismissing foreigners' deaths. And fit and healthy Neil from Birmingham is the fifth instructor to die in the past few years on the island. Diving is lucrative business there. One pal said, quote, I don't even think they did an autopsy. This just doesn't add up to me, end quote. A spate of unexplained deaths and murders of backpackers and tourists has tainted the island's paradise reputation. And that's the end of the very brief article. There was a reference to a total of five scuba instructors who have died on Koh Tao. The most notorious incident involved the assassination of Mr. Ban in early 2002 when a lone gunman fired six shots into him at point-blank range as he sat drinking with a couple of his friends near Syrie Beach. And in fact, another little anecdote is that at the time, at the time, Neil Giblin was actually sitting on a balcony on Sari Beach and he heard the shots and that's what he passed on to one of his students. Another uh, very infamous case is that of Yoshi Sazawa, also known as Charlene. She was a Japanese national. She vanished on the 18th of June in 2004, and a big search went out for her, which started at her rented house, but uh, no one could find her until a week later on the 25th of June. She was found outside in the jungle, and her body was uh, in a, a very bad state, and there was some evidence that uh, animals had been pecking or uh, chewing on part of her body. Once news of that uh, became public, which didn't happen until November of 2021, the Royal Thai Police issued statements, including a statement from a Major General, stating quite falsely that she had actually been found in her bungalow with a suicide note. And that was contrary to all of the information that I've received from many people, including information that came from Michael Sputh, who uh, had been her de facto partner for many years. They were estranged at the time of her disappearance, but uh, he was also the founder of the Big Blue Diving Company. Uh, another person to die, another diving instructor to die, was in fact Michael Sputh himself. He died in a motorbike accident in December of 2021. The uh, locals on Koh Tao tried to uh, keep his death a, uh, a bit of a secret for quite some time. He was actually found to be brain dead uh, when he was uh, moved to Bangkok Hospital on Koh Samui. Uh, but uh, once he's uh, discovered to be brain dead, then for the legal definition and both the medical definition, uh, he is actually dead. 
but uh, many people on Kotal uh, were insisting that he was still alive and they didn't actually announce that uh, he had died until about the 3rd of January of 2022. And another person who died after a, um, a night dive was a Belgian man by the name of Alain Dolphin and uh, he died on the 19th of March 2021. And there was also a young Japanese man, he was about 30-ish, his name was Hiroshi and he had just finished a dive master course. A dive master is below the uh, standard of a scuba diving instructor but he just uh, passed a dive master course and had partaken in a snorkel test, which is a fairly dangerous and reckless drinking game. And he had a lot of fluid poured into his snorkel, which he was supposed to drink. And it was poured in by one of the instructors. And uh, he unfortunately had a very bad reaction and died. And that was you know, way back in about 2002. And uh, that was a death that, was, that has been covered up. You probably won't find much about that on the internet anywhere. But anyway, I will post links to a number of my other videos in the description below. So if anyone wants to research those further, they can go ahead and do so. There was also a reference, of course, in the Sun article and in other articles to the fact that the Royal Thai Police are often very quick to dismiss uh, tourists' deaths and, in fact, the deaths of any foreigners. And uh, quite often they're written off as being accidents or as suicide even though there may be uh, very uh, cogent evidence that uh, foul play was involved. And in fact, uh, you know, if we think of the death of Bernd Grotsch, who was a German businessman who had a, um, had a motorbike uh, rental business on Kotal for many years, uh, when he died, the police just instantly said, oh, well, he either had a heart attack or he had a snake bite. But his family back in Bavaria, uh, in Ingolstadt, uh, couldn't get any uh, autopsy reports and they couldn't get any reliable information out of the Royal Thai Police. So unfortunately, the Royal Thai Police have got a very well-earned reputation for being, for being quite unreliable and quite dishonest when it comes to uh, giving causes of death or providing causes of death. And of course, there is the other case of Elise Dallimagna, who was the Belgian woman who died on Koh Tao and uh, the best reports were that she was found on the ground um, wrapped in t-shirts with uh, and part her body was partially burnt partially eaten by animals uh, with a, an empty fuel can nearby but the police came up with uh, a story that she had been found uh, hanging from a tree uh, but really it's very difficult to believe anything that the royal thai police say well that's just some very brief supplementary information to help flesh out the story that has been published in the mainstream media. And I may include some additional information in the description below as well, and I will have lots of links if you want to uh, follow up other issues there. Thank you very much for viewing and bye for now.